Hi everyone, I'm Zayas, and today I'm here to review Sono Bisque Doll, aka My Dress Up Darling. Bisque Doll is a manga which started in 2018 and is currently ongoing with 70 chapters out at the time of this review. This is Fukuda Shinichi's first big hit. He previously had a couple of one-shots and he also had one longer manga, which had some extremely questionable content. It was called Memorio Mebek, and it had a relationship between a brother and his younger sister, and he was 18 and she was 15, and let's just say it was extremely etchy. You can see some of the sexual scenes carry over to Bistol, but it's much less extreme, luckily. Recently, Bistol is a hot topic, because the anime just got released, and its main character, Marin, is pretty much the seasonal anime girl that everyone loves right now. It's a romance, slice of life, school, sign-in manga. Right off the bat, you can see that it uh, has some great artwork. Uh, this this is some really, really great artwork. I re really like the artwork in this thing. Yeah, it's, it's really, really great. Um, not much else to say about it. All jokes aside, the artwork is good, despite being a little on the sexual side. But one thing that really bothers me is there's this like sort of blush used in the beginning, and the author likes to apply it everywhere on the character's faces, on the character's legs, on the character's arms, and it really does annoy me, but later on in the series, he still applies the blush, but it somehow looks like a lot better than how it originally started, so that's probably the only thing in the artwork that really bothered me. The character designs in particular were done really well, the characters are very memorable, the designs are super detailed, and the proportions are great. Sometimes I just have to wonder, was it necessary to make these characters 15 years old with all the sexual content that went on here? I mean, he could have literally just said they were 18 and a lot of this would feel a lot better to me. They easily look like they could be like 18 plus. When it comes to the characters themselves, at first you kind of think that this manga is about the stereotypical shy guy and the really assertive Yaru girl. Although this is sort of true, there are some pretty big key differences that make the characters a lot more memorable for me personally. Gojo is my personal favorite character because of how passionate and sincere this guy is. He really loves his hobbies and he lets it show. He can be on the shyer side at times, which can be annoying, but he is undergoing a lot of character development and he seems more confident, more bold than he did at the start of the series. Kitagawa can have some of those stereotypical Gyaru traits, but at some times she is a little bit on the shyer side, which I enjoyed those moments. And on top of that, she's really laid back and sort of carefree, which I also liked about her. According to the translation, we don't get too much of that Gyaru slang, but when it comes through in the English translation is when it really starts to bother me. I'm glad that it doesn't come through that often because the slang does bother me. The romance between these two is pretty adorable and super cute. There's tons of great moments between these two in the series the entire time. Their conversations are always fun and it's pretty enjoyable to see these two together. They do tons of romantic stuff together which I really enjoyed. They're talking on the phone at night, they're doing stuff like going on dates together, they hang out at each other's houses all the time. But it kind of bothers me a little bit about how the author doesn't want to progress the relationship too much. He didn't make it official even though they're already dating. So it kind of feels like it's dragging on a bit. But still, the romance is good and it's not that big of a deal. The author seems to care a lot about cosplay. And I really like when authors like to include their personal passions into their manga. And you can tell that he cares a lot about cosplay. He knows all the itty bitty details. He knows all the small stuff. But at times... Later on in the series, it can feel like sort of like they're rehashing what they've already done and there's not much new. Although the first few cosplays were unique and fun, the latter like couple haven't been as exciting as the first couple. I don't think necessarily the cosplays are the problem, but I think if he went at it in a different direction or did something more unique than before, it might be a little more entertaining. Although the main couple are a really great couple, there's not that many memorable side characters in this thing. There are some side characters with good character design, but they're not really reoccurring too often, and you don't really remember them too much at the end of the series. When it comes to the comedy in this thing, it's pretty good. Even though it's not the focal point of this manga, there are moments where Gojo has these deadpan reactions to Kitagawa doing something kind of questionable. Sometimes the, the comedy is more on the sexual side, 
which I, again, I wouldn't mind if they were 18, but they are 15, so sometimes it's kind of questionable. But the comedy is genuinely funny, and I enjoyed it. And again, this manga isn't trying to make you like laugh the entire time. It's sort of just sprinkled in as like a little relief from the rest of the manga. The worst part of the series for me was probably the most recent arc, the cultural festival arc. I really did not like this whatsoever. There was no comedy, the vibe of the entire arc just felt like super serious, and there was a ton of drama in this arc. And oftentimes the author will make this sort of bait and switch where he'll try to pretend like the characters are going to say something negative or say something hurtful, and then they'll switch over to them saying something caring or kind. But at times it feels like the characters can be overly caring, overly kind, and overly supportive, which kind of makes me feel as if they're being a little fake. And the entire just tone of this of this series during this arc felt like a little fake to me. Also, these characters cry super easily. And while I don't mind like one character having a characteristic such as Kitagawa to cry easily, it seems like a lot of characters will cry over like the slightest thing, which can feel like a little bit overdramatic to me. That arc in particular just felt like super over dramatic, very forced, very inorganic, and it kind of felt circle jerky to me at times where the characters are just sort of jerking each other off with like, oh, you're so great at this, oh, you're so good, and all this stuff, and it just felt way too fake. But after this arc, there is still some potential. The new arc seems to be kind of interesting. The series definitely has a couple flaws here and there, but overall, it's definitely worth checking out. I enjoyed this series. It has room to grow. I'm feeling a uh, light to decent 7. Thanks everyone for watching. Like the video and leave a comment for the algorithm. It really helps out. Thanks everyone.